So in this video, we are going to be talking about the spinal thalamic tract. The spinal thalamic tract carries three modalities. These are pain, temperature, and crude touch. The spinal thalamic tract is an anterolateral So when you talk about the spinal cord ascending tracts, um, they can be anterolateral. Um, so that means they're coming from the lateral part of the spinal cord, which is the segment here, or the anterior segment. So that's lateral, anterior, um, lateral again here, and then this is your dorsal tract. So later we'll see the dorsal column comes from the dorsal tract. Um, and the dorsal tract is a more specialized system. The anterolateral is a more primitive system. Um, that's why when you see dorsal column sort of receptors, which we'll talk about later, or the sensation that comes from it, it's more specialized. You can pinpoint it more easily. Whereas the anterolateral system is more primitive. For example, if you have a, if your thumb is sort of uh, throbbing with pain or your toe is, you can't localize it as well as say a touch with a fine needle. The fine needle touch would be coming from your dorsal column tract. So just with what I've drawn, your spinal cord, it has your gray matter, which is a head shape. Um, and the gray matter can be broken down into the dorsal horn or the ventral horn. Dorsal is for sensory and your ventral is for motor. You have a pseudo-unipolar neuron which is coming into the spinal cord um, for your spinal thalamic tract. So a pseudo-unipolar neuron, the axon is pretty much split into two parts. One is from the periphery and the other is entering the central nervous system. This here is a cell body, and the cell body is part of the dorsal root ganglion, which is a collection of cell bodies. So you'll have other cell bodies here as well. I've just shown one. So for the spinal thalamic tract, you're obviously feeling pain, temperature, crude touch. So how are you feeling it? Obviously there has to be a receptor, and the receptor for these are your a delta or C fiber receptors. The A delta receptors are more for sharp pain and the C fiber is more for dull pain. Um, so your throbbing, burning pain, whereas this is sort of sharp localized pain for your A delta. So from the receptors, your the axons are coming through. Its cell body is in the dorsal root ganglion and then that second part of its axon is coming into the dorsal horn it's entering the dorsal horn and here it's synapsing so this is called your first order neuron the one coming from your receptor into the dorsal horn this is synapsing in the dorsal horn and from here your second order neurons have started so this is another cell body here. And this exact location in the dorsal horn is called substanza genosa. Um, so then the second order neuron starts. And here they're going to cross to the other side of the spinal cord. So they cross in what's called the ventral white commissure. This is where they're crossing. So the ventral white commissure and what commissure means is left and right collection so when you talk about the spinal thalamic tract the tract is referring to a bundle of axons going up and down whereas a commissure is referring to a bundle of axons going like left and right so it's going to cross to the other side Make note that 
while it's crossing to the other side, it's not going to happen in the same segment of the spinal cord that the neuron is or the axon is entered in. So what I mean by this is if, let's say, this level here of the neuron entering, let's say that's maybe T5 of your spinal cord, right? So you have thoracic level 5. You know, your spinal cord or you have spinal vertebrae. Um, so this one, for example, we've said is T5. So what I'm saying is, say, for example, this is where the axon is entered. By the time it's finished going up, it's usually two segments that it takes to come up. So by the time it's completely crossed, it might be T3 now. Keep this in mind for later when we talk about lesions. The other neuron I've drawn here is in blue. This is also part of the spinal thalamic tract, but the spinal thalamic tract can be broken down into the lateral spinal thalamic tract or the anterior. The anterior has to do with crude thoughts, whereas the lateral has to do with pain and temperature. So the blue one, it also comes from the dorsal root ganglion, but it'll um, go to the ventral white commissure, but then when it starts to ascend, it's ascending in the anterior part of the spinal cord. The lateral part is obviously ascending from the lateral part. So this is our, another segment of the spinal cord. Let's say, for example, if I said this was T5, let's say this is T3 segment. And so there's going to be more and more fibers coming. So from T5, there are fibers coming from T4, T3, T2, T1. All these axons are collecting. So in the anterior part as well as the lateral part. Eventually what happens is when you finish with the spinal cord, all these tracks from both the anterior spinal thalamic and the lateral spinal thalamic, they all join or narrow down, combine together to form what is called the spinal lemniscus. So instead of drawing like bundles of axons, I've just drawn it with one black colored one but it's not one, it's still a track, a bundle of axons going up. These axons then go up and they pass the reticular formation, but they also have connections with the reticular formation. Reticular formation is part of the brain and it sort of aids in consciousness and keeping you awake, the alertness sort of in turn, in part comes from the reticular formation. So when you think about it, you're trying to go to sleep, but you have an aching pain. The reason it's sort of difficult to go to sleep is because reticular formation is getting information um, from your spinal thalamic tract. And reticular formation is also part of um, keeping you alert. Usually reticular formation sort of dampens down when you sleep, but it's, it's sort of hard for it to dampen down when it's getting information from the spinal thalamic tract like that. It passes the reticular formation to enter a part of the thalamus called the ventral posterior lateral thalamus. So it's a segment of the thalamus where this information is feeding and here it will synapse. So your second order neuron, which started um, in the substance of Zenosa, has now finished in the thalamus. And from the thalamus then this third order neuron will go to the post central gyrus and so what this is is in your brain you have a central sulcus if you like if you know like you have your brain you have some sort of valleys these are your sulci and then you have spaces between the sulci which is your gyrus so after your central sulcus the immediately next gyrus is called the post central gyrus and this is to do with sensory the pre-central gyrus, will, which would be here, has to do with motor. But spinal thalamic tract is all sensory, so we'll go into the post-central gyrus. And this is obviously part of your cortex. If it's going to your cortex, you're becoming conscious of whatever is happening. So that's where you can feel the pain. So now we're going to be talking about lesions in the spinal thalamic tract. So let's pretend we have a hemisection of the spinal cord. So if this is a spinal cord segment, 
hemisection means you've lost one half of it. This is also called brown saccade syndrome. So let's pretend in this segment we have a hemisection. So you've lost the left side. Let's see what happens to the spinal, spinal cord. When we talk about lesions, you want to think of two things. What happens at the level of the lesion and what happens below the lesion. At the level of the lesion, there is complete sensory loss. Why? Well, your dorsal horn is responsible for sensory information and sensory information is coming into the dorsal horn. So if this is lesion, no sensory information can get in from the ipsilateral side. So uh, if this is the lesion on the left side, no information of sensation can come from the left side at the level of the lesion. The right side is fine um, at the level of the lesion. Sensory information can still come in. Um, so then let's look at what happens below the lesion. Well, if this side is lesion here, what tract is getting affected? Well, these fibers are running through it and they're getting affected. So if there's a left hemisection, let's see where this fiber is coming from. The fiber goes down, crosses into the right side. So information of pain and temperature is coming from the right side, going into the left um, as it's crossing through the ventral white commissure. It's going, it's coming up, and it's getting lesioned. So you're not going to get information from the right side if there's a left hemisection. This means that there is a contralateral loss of pain and temperature information. Now if you look at um, the right side, so if, I mean if there's a lesion on the left side, let's look at the um, fibers running through this side of the spinal cord, the right side. Well they're coming from the left side aren't they? And the left side is fine. You, there's no lesion here so it's still going to go up to the uh, somatosensory cortex. So contralateral um, loss of pain and temperature, but ipsilaterally, it's fine. Because this is a left side hemisection and this is left side information, which you're still getting for pain and temperature. So in a semi hemisection, there is a loss of pain and temperature on the contralateral side only. And finally, the last thing to remember is that it takes about two segments for the spinothalamic tract to cross. So if there is a lesion um, for one or two segments below it, it will still be ipsilateral loss, but then below that it'll be contralateral.